been a long time brewing in some ways. I, um, in my college days, I'd walk past like this uh, certain bell tower in Birmingham every day on my way into college, on my way back. And I'd, I'd, they had a certain chime it did on the hour. And I sort of, it's one of those things where you don't quite notice it at first, but start you start listening to it a bit more closely. And there was something in the, the sound of it that I was kind of like hearing this like this harmonic in it that was kind of sounded quite weird and otherworldly. So I transcribed it and figured out what the harmonic was. And it's because of the shape of the bells, they resonate 
upwards on minor intervals, minor thirds, tritones, rather than perfect fifths and major thirds. So it kind of has this slightly weird, like haunting sound to it. Doing the Ideas of Noise Festival, we were um, we were looking around a church to do a, an organ gig we wanted to put on. We were looking around St Paul's and happened to the bell ringers happened to be sort of practicing as we were looking around. And it sort of the light bulb went on. It's like, oh, could we do a project with the bell ringers? Um, asked you know, asked the, um, the canon who was showing us around at the time, and yeah, made an introduction and sort of that was it. That was me kind of on my way to making this thing happen. They were very welcoming and sort of curious about what it might be, but sort of, I think they were wary of, um, maybe slightly wary of collaborations with composers. I think in the past they've had composers approach them and sort of, it hasn't really fit in with what they see as their, um, I guess their aesthetic or maybe their method of working. It's kind of, it's quite particular. Um, and I think sometimes they were, 
there was a sense that sometimes composers come in and try and sort of assert their will a bit too much and say, just ring these notes in this order. And that's something that's not of interest to them. And um, it was, yeah, sort of seeing what the physical limitations of the instrument were almost and what their processes were and trying to get involved in that in a sort of quite a detail way, I guess. So I was asking a lot of questions and kind of figuring out what the instruments were capable of and what what would be something that they'd see as a worthwhile exchange, you know? Because I think it's, I was very keen for the um, the dialogue to be two-way with this thing, I think. So I went around to a few rehearsals um, and sort of I was slowly bringing some ideas to them. Uh, the main one being this idea of the pendulum wave that I'd seen these videos of. So if you set pendulums going of like increasing incremental lengths, and set them all going at once, they start to phase with each other. So you get these patterns that you see emerging visually on these videos. There's quite a lot of videos on YouTube you can kind of check out of these things. So I, um, I brought this idea to them as a thing of like, could you, if I asked you to ring at a set BPM, you know, to a metronome, could you do it? And so we gave it a go and I was kind of workshopping it with them. And it, yeah, that's the, that was the first piece that I kind of brought to them as an idea, the first part of the work was this this pendulum wave idea. It's kind of, it's quite counterintuitive to them um, in a way. They, or um, it does some things that are sort of like transgressive in strict sort of traditional bell ringing, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, when the bells like strike together in, in, in change ringing, that's a mistake. It means somebody's lost their place in the pattern. You should never hear two bells at the same right. time. Yeah. I wanted to deliberately make them do that to sort of right. see what the sound would be in sort of this um, incredible kind of ringing harmonic sound you get from all of them hitting together at once. It's sort of the resonance of it. It's quite quite something. So we, we tried that out, um, and that ended up being the piece called Waves.
one of the basic ideas seems to be one of contrast. So the, the first uh, piece starts off with the bell ringers are doing their thing, and then the improvisers do their thing. You know, so there's a kind of contrast, and then uh, gradually they they come together um, over the various pieces that follow. I mean, uh, am I right in saying that? Yeah, the first the first track is definitely on the album is um, sort of just setting up these two things that you're then going to sort of combine. You know, like a mise en place <laughs> if you're cooking or something. You know. Um, but the first piece and the last piece on the album are these sort of, they're these two sides of the coin, really. It's sort of, it was another thing that came about as a result of hanging out with the bell ringers at their practice was before they practice or do anything, they have to get the bells from facing downwards, which is their natural sort of state, yeah. to being right up on their end, completely inverted, which is how they, how they have them for when they're ringing, because it goes, it does a full 360, stops, and then does another one, and they have the hand stroke the backstroke mm. to do that so it was mm. like this upside down bell so to get it up they have to kind of start swinging it and swing it harder and harder until it sort of like lands perfectly balanced on its end so I was just listening to the sound of them doing this at the start of the rehearsal and I kind of loved the sound of it so much I was like well that's going in the piece straight away <laughs> that's like it's yeah. part of the it sort of struck me as like a kind of a ritualistic sort of thing that they do before they start it's right. the kind of like um I guess maybe there's an equivalent in gig terms of, you know, like the house lights going down and the sort of the audience being sat down and then the mm. thing starts. It, sort of, mm. it was kind of, it was to get the sense of this like entering a, entering a space, I guess, where something's about to happen and then they ring and then the bells come down again. So the whole album starts and ends with the ringing up and then the ringing down again that they do afterwards. But as, as the piece goes on, the, the improvisers seem to be imitating the bells. Um, and, and there's a kind of a fanfare on the trumpets sometimes uh, that, that seems to fit with, with bell ringing. And, uh, and, but how, and, and you, you wrote certain sort of lines for the musicians, but then at other times they're, they're improvising. Yeah. But, but in a way that seems to be going towards the sound of the bells. Now, how did, how did you get that to happen? Um, it's sort of a, um, a combination of things, I guess, really. is um, Yeah, there's quite a deliberate, like, like you say, at the start, of the, the start of the piece, I guess. Both elements start quite separate, and then by the end of the piece, they've sort of come together. It's sort of like they've started independently and then they're like moving towards each other and sort of like getting the musicians to sort of think like bell ringers was quite a challenge. Yes. It's sort of, in many ways, their thought process is a little bit sort of, to a musician can be counterintuitive. Your scale is backwards and like, the, the way that bell ringers think and articulate about time in sort of a metronomic sense is really interesting as well. It's, um, your sort of time is a relation to what, el what what's going before right. and after it and what's around you in an ensemble rather than necessarily like a strict metronomic pulse. So they kind of, they're playing by feel. You're listening for the person before you to do your thing and the person afterwards and it's sort of, the whole thing sort of hangs on everybody sort of maintaining an equal distance. Yeah, their thought process is very, very different. So it's getting musicians to think like that was a real, sort of challenge. So we practice some of their most basic bell ringing patterns as a way of like using it in various improvising frameworks. So the plain hunt piece, for example, which is like that's your, maybe that's your bell ringers version of like a, a 12 bar blues or something. It's like, it's the, um, it's the um, simplest way of kind of every bell changing position once, but the pattern never repeating on a line. So it's like each bell occupies the position once, except for the end one, does twice, and then back again. So they all swap places with each other in this kind of pattern. It shares quite a lot of things with like um, minimalist composition sort of techniques as well, where you're just like, you follow the process mm. through to its logical conclusion. What comes first on the album, the playing hunt that you hear, um, is actually the loosest version of that. So we said, we're gonna take this same framework of the order that you play in, but it's gonna be complete sort of agency down to the players as to what they play. See, the only thing that is fixed is the order. 
So um, each time it goes, each, t each time a new line starts, that is a new person leading the improvisation for that particular line, and then we start again, like a kind of a typewriter, almost, you reset it. Yeah. So that was the loosest version of the plane hunt we did, but we started with that as a way of sort of laying out the vast contrast first, and then we moved through the plane hunt series, through the album. You end up on plane hunt three, I think it is. Uh, which is the last one where that's back to that strict version that we did where the pictures are fixed and that's where you hear the musicians probably most closely imitating the bells where it's sort of like we're moving back inwards towards yeah. this thing. There's an element of contrast within the, the music as well as the contrast between the music and the bells within the improvisations from the um, you know, the musicians. Am I right in that? Yeah, it's, it's sort of the, the parts of the piece that are maybe just for the musicians where we're, they're all exploring a different element of sort yeah. of what I perceive to be um, elements that I was taking from the bell ring, like ideas that, that had inspired me from working with the bell ringers. So each piece is maybe exploring a different sort of palette or element of, of, the, of the bell ringing sort of process aesthetic, I guess. Yeah. On the piece diagrams, um, this is another way that we're kind of using this material from sort of working with the bell ringers and using their, their methods as a sort of a working, a working framework to improvise on. So um, the, the blue line diagrams um, that I was talking to you about, I picked one of those and sort of flipped it on its side and turned it into a kind of uh, a graphic score where there's a kind of a decision tree for the musicians to follow based on, they, they pick a particular path within this blue line diagram. So they follow the movement of a bell turned on its side um, so that their um, their decisions are kind of informed by the bell's position on its on each particular line. Um, so that was kind of one more way that we were sort of turning these, turning something that's kind of quite coded and um, prescriptive into something looser. Thank you.
with bell ringers, I mean, on the one track, and now, which is it? They seem to be doing something where uh, it must be what you were talking about with the metronome, but they seem almost to be in a jazz way just behind the beat. <laughs> uh, maybe that's my imagination. Um, but they're doing something which is not correct in terms of bell ringing, but it, it produces a kind of a, a groove. Uh, yeah, yeah, there which is. Which I find is, I find that fascinating. Actually. Yeah, that was that was the. I think this is the piece you're referring to. That that would be um, yeah. Uh, it's called changes. So um, the titles may be a bit of a, a cheeky pun because they call the the ring the English style of bell ring is called change ringing and also the jazz musicians play changes. So it was kind of like a little um, a little riff on that. But it's sort of it's almost my idea was to use the. Um, use the bell ringers as I've, I've sort of started thinking about it almost as like a sequencer in electronic music so something that or a drum machine you know so this thing plays these series of things in an order and then you can change the order almost um so i i started thinking about the yeah the um using the bells as almost to create a rhythmic pattern. I was kind of fascinated yes. by their rhythmic patterns anyway that they were playing because it's quite interesting rhythmically to listen to what's going on. They kind of, a ring of eight bells, because they have the hand stroke and the back stroke, they sort of ring eight and then another eight consecutively and then there's almost a beat of rest afterwards. Right. So eight bells rings in 17 time. Right. as a kind of a thing so it was I was kind of fascinated with the rhythm anyway as a sort of a just just from a kind of quite even numbered groups of things making something quite odd numbered come out of the other end was quite interesting so I took this idea like what if we could do a groove that has this pattern based sequence of thing going on with the bells almost make them pretend to be a metronome or pretend yeah. to be a drum machine right. um, and have the musicians kind of layer with that and play yeah. a groove with the bells was kind of my um, my thought process for that for that particular piece. So um, yeah, the bells are like the eight bells are ringing in what turns out to be like seventeen, and then because the patterns of bells have a natural like phase to them, so same as with the metronome the metronome piece the tolls waves, um, the bell patterns kind of naturally phase as well. Each each bell plays the same thing but displaced against another bell. So I was kind of interested in displacing these two rhythms against each other. So the musicians are playing in like five and the bells are playing in 17 and it's sort of like, it creates this like slightly maybe, um, you can tell there's a pulse but you can't tell that there's a, a time, like there's not a strict time signature. Almost. Yeah, right. so, I want to create a little bit of a kind of a rhythmic illusion, so you're not sure where you started or entered. Yes, that's, that's where the, thing. my feeling was that it just behind the beat came from. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. I mean, it's like it's not surprising. <laughs> like it's, yeah. uh, it's several tons of metal. <laughs> yeah. You can, you can't blame them for being a bit behind the beat, maybe. Yeah, but that's always your jazz. That's it, often the positive. Yeah, thing. you know, it is. It's sort of yeah. That's what brought me back to it and thinking about it as a groove. Actually, was. Um, you do get this sense of like they're they're negotiating the time in the ensemble, which is exactly what jazz musicians do. It's not strict, and the, yeah. there is a negotiation goes on about where the pulse is, and some yes. people can be like slightly one side or the other yeah. of it, and that that kind of friction is often what creates like sort of yeah. things that feel good rhythmically. Yeah, exactly. like, yeah. Is where that comes from. So yeah, I guess there is a bit of a maybe it was the behind the beatness that made me sort of think of doing that in the first place. Yeah. And then there's the electronics, the, the third element, uh, which you um, devised yourself. Um, again, there seems to be a sort of contrast there, you know, with the bells. The electronics are like, they're me manipulating a lot of samples of, as, as I was sort of developing the project, I was going around and recording church towers and stuff and starting to transcribe the patterns and also just like think generally about it. So I was just going around with my recorder and like mm. taking a walk to a bell tower if I, if I knew they happened to be practicing that evening or something, I'd like have a walk and check this out. And I started picking up other stuff and like detritus along the way as I was as I was recording these bells. They're kind of like, I'd walk around the churchyard and maybe like walk around the road nearby or something and sort of try and capture the bells from different angles because like, as you walk around a tower, um, you get like a, you get a different sound depending on where you are. Especially if you go to somewhere like St Martin's in the Bullring, 
Mm. If you walk around it at ringing time, you can hear different bells depending on where you're stood around the tower. So it's sort of, mm. this sense of not quite getting a, an entire picture is something that I quite enjoy in a lot of like the art and music that I like. Is sort of you having a small piece of the puzzle missing is kind of an attractive thing. So mm. I was kind of wandering around and taking different recordings, and I was starting to pick up like different bits of sort of things that you wouldn't class necessarily as the bell tower. So like. Um, I caught some of the like the zebra crossing as I was as I was walking across. And like, oh, that's, that's kind of a bell actually yeah. in a way. It's sort of, and I started thinking about like the wider function of of bells and sort of what they what they do and what they've meant to people. Mm -hmm. I guess so. There's a kind of like bells as signals. Mm -hmm. So you've got your cross your your, um, yeah, your crossings when they chime the hour. Um, alarms as well. I was recording like. Um, sort of alarms going off at night outside and stuff, car alarms, yeah, yeah. And ambulance sirens. I started to sort of like record as well. So things, and bells. Nice cream, an ice cream van. Ice cream van, yeah. yeah. So you know, that's a signal. <laughs> the ice cream van's coming in, sort of. Yeah. yeah, so there's an ice cream van um, in there. Yeah. And what else? Yeah, the ambulances and sort of they struck me as like bells as like warnings as well of things like that. Um, so I started, to, yeah, I was just gathering this kind of scrapbook of various samples as I was walking around Birmingham in various places. I think some some from Amsterdam as well, like bike bells and things make an mm. appearance in the in the piece later on. Mm. So um, there's various aspects of bells that I'm sort of recording and trying to just give a like a slightly wider commentary on it maybe of, of sort of there is this um, kind of folk art slash participation thing that is bell ringing, but there's also that it seeps into our wider kind of world in ways that we don't quite realise. And it's again, it's like, it comes back maybe to that first thing that made me interested in the project was sort of walking past that bell tower and something about the harmonic frequencies just like pricking my ears up and sort of things that I hadn't noticed, for, you know, I've been walking past it for weeks, months. And then suddenly, just stopping to listen one day, it became suddenly interesting. It's sort of the focusing on the detail of stuff.
And what about the future? I mean, is this a, a one-off project or is it something that you might like to develop, uh, either with the Bell Riggers or in a sense take the, 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 the overall concept of it and don't use, go you know, work in a dockyard or something like that? Yeah, it's definitely, um, spite of it sort of led to a lot of thoughts, I guess, about other projects. I really enjoyed this kind of way of working, I think, mm -hmm. project-based things where um, going in and sort of really try, spending time with something and trying to understand what it is that makes it tick and then do something that sort of reflects that is really, really kind of interesting. So there's more planned with the bell ringers, definitely to start with, you know. Yeah. We've got a couple of launch gigs for the CD itself and then I'm hoping to tour it next year if we can, so that'll be quite interesting because church towers ring in different keys. And, and the launch gig will be at St Paul's again? Yes, yes, yeah, so we're doing a launch at St Paul's on the 12th, no, 14th of October. Sorry. 14th of October. <laughs> 14th of October. Yeah, yeah we're going to launch back in the church that the, the piece was originally in.